Positive Spin, presenting positive, innovative, and solution-oriented news from around the world. Five years after Manny launched his campaign, the Philippines adopted some of the On today's program, we profile Manny Calonzo, an environmental activist from the Philippines and recipient of the 2018 Goldman Environmental Prize. And we'll see highlights of the 25th annual Asian American Heritage Festival in Northern California. Uh, Harold also then, believed in we'll learn about the Harold Richardson Redwoods Reserve, a success story in the movement to save the Redwoods. Following that, we'll view the award-winning film, Weeds. The power of music to unite. Finally, we'll experience a peace and music concert in London, celebrating the country's Rwandan community. Manny Colonzo is an environmental activist from the Philippines. He led a successful campaign and pressured the government to enact a national ban on the production, use, and sale of lead paint. For his leadership, he was honored with the 2018 Goldman Environmental Prize, the world's largest and most prestigious environmental award. Nestled in the tropical seas of the Western Pacific, the Philippines is a rapidly developing island nation. The Filipino culture is colorful and vibrant. Our country is very rich in natural resources. At the same time, we face major environmental challenges. For over 30 years, Manny Colonzo has been fighting for a toxic-free Philippines. So when studies revealed that decorative paints contained dangerous levels of lead, Manny knew he had to take action. I was shocked and outraged. I have nine nieces and nephews, and their 12 children are like grandchildren to me. They need to be protected from this hidden poison. Lead from lead paint or lead from any other means uh, damages a child's brain. Once the damage is done, you can't really recover from it. In 2008, through the Eco Waste Coalition, a broad network of community groups, many launched a nationwide lead safe paint campaign. Public awareness about the hazards of lead in paint was extremely low. So we went to schools and communities to get the word out. Paint may seem harmless, but when it deteriorates, the lead turns into dust, which children ingest through normal hand-to-mouth contact. Echo Waste also tested paints commonly used on homes, schools, and daycare centers. They found lead levels over a thousand times higher than what's allowed in the United States. We use the results of these studies to galvanize our campaign. We held large demonstrations in the streets. Attention from the media created widespread public awareness, which led to government talks about banning lead in paint. But some paint manufacturers weren't ready for the change. Many knew he'd need to get them on board. There was simply a, a lack of knowledge and awareness, strange as that might sound. Manny brought people here to talk to us about why lead paint was dangerous. I think it was very helpful in galvanizing action in the industry. Five years after Manny launched his campaign, the Philippines adopted some of the strictest global limits for lead in paint. Having a lead paint regulation was only one of the important steps we still needed to do more work to ensure compliance. Over the next four years, EcoWaste actively monitored lead levels in paint and dust. Manny published the data in hard-hitting reports that call for lead-safe paint certification and labeling. The certification would be actual validation and proof that these companies do not have lead in their paint. At long last, the tide finally turned. Public concern and consumer demand convinced the paint industry to adopt the certification program. It was a hard-won victory. 
by 2017, 85% of decorative paints have been certified lead safe. Our lead safe paint program continues to grow in the Philippines and across Asia. There are already certified paint brands in Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. It's so rewarding to think that in coming years, paint will no longer harm children. For outstanding environmental achievement for islands and island nations, the 2018 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Manny Colonzo, Quezon City, the Philippines. For 25 years, the annual Asian American Heritage Festival, under the direction of John Shea, has been presenting the traditions and cultures of the Asian communities in Northern California. Let's see some highlights from the 25th anniversary celebration. Redwood forests of Northern California are some of the last remaining places on earth where we can experience the majesty and timeless beauty of these remarkable trees. In the following segment we'll learn about a success story in the movement to preserve the Redwood Forest of Northern California, the Harrow Richardson Redwoods Reserve. The redwood forests of Northern California are one of nature's most precious gifts to humanity. These ancient trees towering high in the sky are a witness to the glories of nature. However, through man's constant need for expansion and financial greed, these treasures, which are meant to be enjoyed by present and future generations, are being destroyed. An organization at the forefront of preserving these ancient forests is the Save the Redwood League. The Harold Richardson Redwood Reserve is a success story in preserving the redwoods. This is one family's commitment to place the importance of nature over profit, resulting in a lasting legacy of beauty for generations to enjoy. Nestled deep in the wooded hills along the Sonoma coast lies a hidden gem. An old growth redwood forest that was secretly protected. Now revealing the mysteries of an ancient forest that is centuries old. The old growth in Sonoma County uh, were clear cut generations ago. Um, uh, it was among the first to go in the broad California old growth landscape. Um, and there is precious little left. 
Harold Richardson was third generation Richardson family member, patriarch of the family, and absolutely loved the forest on this property. There were some locals who knew that uh, the Richardson family had been, had been guarding this remarkable resource, but nobody had really been out there. A diamond in a rough well, uh, if you know a Richardson, you know that they're very uh, uh, secretive about what they have or they like to hold on to it and not uh, 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 flaunt their holdings per se. And so as the property was passed on um, from generation to generation in the, in the Richardson family, each one of the family members always thought it as a, um, as a special place. Uh, Harold also believed in taking care of the forest and he always thought of this place as more than just a harvestable plot. Because there's so little Sonoma County forest of this stature that um, uh, we're excited to get our research team out there and really understand what's happening on the ground. We are in the largest tree in Sonoma County. We're at about 59 meters in it. It's probably about 75 meters tall. And until a few months ago, I hadn't even heard of it. I didn't know if, even, if there was anything up here. But it's a monster. One of the most interesting trees we've ever climbed. And it's something that we believe now that everybody should be able to share and enjoy and walk amongst the redwoods and respect something that's so great. So we've got ancient redwood forest that's been stewarded by this remarkable family uh, that now, for the first time ever, is going to be permanently protected and eventually open to the public. the award-winning short film Weeds, which uses the metaphor of a struggling, lowly plant to inspire empathy for the millions of refugees displaced by war and persecution. Immigration is a never-ending problem facing thousands upon thousands of people arriving in the United States. They come with the hope of creating a better life for themselves and their families. Many are fleeing from violence and persecution. They've heard that the United States is a welcoming country of opportunity, built by the millions of immigrants who have made this country their home. However, when they arrive, they're faced with suspicion and a policy of being rounded up and separated from their children. The award-winning film Weeds gives focus to the issue of immigration, using animation as a way to create empathy and compassion for the people arriving in our country looking for a better life. How did you know that kind of a metaphor would work? Well, as the way that the story came to me was when I was in front of my house, and I wanted to find something that I could say and didn't know how to say it until I was pulling the dandelions out of my yard, and suddenly I realized that the dandelions in the next yard were in this yard without any water, and they just wanted to have water. And suddenly it just became this wonderful metaphor for all life, just needing to have hope and having those basic needs met. And suddenly it just became this wonderful metaphor for people in need that are stuck by no fault of their own, just the, you know, it's where they landed, um, that are stuck in the land without any hope, without any water, without food, without opportunity. I just, suddenly it became this wonderful statement of being able to say, it's just like life itself. The life needs to have an opportunity to live. This was something that it took hold of me as an inspiration. It was something that it just had to be made as a piece of art. And I feel really blessed that I'm surrounded by so many talented artists that were generous enough to share their time and their talents to help make this film happen. And I think all of us were really 
with all the rhetoric that's been flying around, it's like anti-immigrant rhetoric and how dark it is and stuff. It kind of was like, is this the country that we are? Do we want, is this the world we want the place to be? And I think all of us wanted to speak out and say something. And the wonderful thing about animation is it can make you care about things that you may never care about in real life. I mean, it's like, because ultimately, I mean, the little plant is just, it's just a little weed. It, it has no real value in our society, but when you see it in the film, you care about that little thing. And because animation can make you care about things that you just normally wouldn't care about. And so to use that as a tool um, to make people feel something for something they may not feel something for initially. And if they can make the jump from that to feeling more something for another person, then you can change things. Because it's like one of the things I've always believed is if you can change the way people feel about something, then you can main, change the way they think about something. And if you can change the way you think, then you can change the world. Right. So uh, I hope you love it. I hope you laugh. We hope you cry. <laughs> we hope you have fun with it. So here's me. Thank you. In London, the Amaharo Peace and Music Concert, celebrating the country's Rwandan community, marked the first ever collaboration between the Rwandan community and any outside group. The result was an inspiring and uplifting event. Amaharo Zatsini means peace. A word that rings deep in us. Um, we never ask Rwandese about peace, because they, don't, they never shut up about it. Anybody knows our region, uh, we've had a very troubled, you know, period of years, decades, you know, 
and um, we live in hope. Peace is needed to be told because most people live without peace in their hearts. Coming to something like this, it opens your heart, the music opens your heart and you go back home with a little bit of peace. The power of music to unite is kind of second to none. That was the first thing that surprised me most. The highest number of people that were in this gathering were people from all different backgrounds. It was the first time, and I've been here for 13 years. I saw very many faces of that multicultural integration that I have not seen in my lifetime. As soon as I walked in here, I felt an energy that was just, everybody was smiling and hugging, and, and it was just really, really special. In 1994, we had a genocide in Rwanda. Uh, I lost my parents and three brothers and a sister during that genocide. Then I lost everything. It was difficult to sing about peace because I didn't have peace. After nine years dealing with anger, bitterness, and resentment. I was healed because I decided to forgive the man who killed my parents. The way I got that piece, it's difficult even to, to describe that. And my life came back and I started to sing again. And you cannot preach peace if you don't have peace. You need to have peace first and you can share the peace with others. It's difficult for us to imagine there's just one human race, but we like to cling on to our divisions and exhibit our hate. Maybe one day we'll listen to the wise men who say, we don't own a piece of Mother Earth. Mother Earth owns us. And everybody here is on a temporary stay. Thank you very much. You do not need to be afraid of the darkness of this world because there is a light that you carry. And it is the light of knowing. The message that he puts across is very touchy and it's common sense. It was a powerful message. Uh, it captivated uh, a lot of people because uh, at one point you could uh, hear the whole room quiet. What I've seen today is very really impressive. I'm so, so, so of a uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it was brilliant. We should do more, more, more events like this, just to help people who are disturbed. There are lots of people who are disturbed because of different things, so something like this will help them get over it. general sense like I just stumbled into something extremely special and unique and 
Yeah, always like where a heart's been longing to, you know, that's a sense people talking something profound uh, that, you know, it's um, the whole world over is longing for. Thank you for watching Positive Spin. This show is made possible through the generosity of the Patty and Jack Wright Foundation. Watch us on Free Speech TV. Subscribe to our previous episodes on YouTube. And please, like us on Facebook. I'm Bill McCarthy. Now it's your turn. Inspire, empower your community. Create your own positive news. Thank you.